Hey guys, today we are testing the new uh, BMW 7 Series. Uh, this particular example has a, uh, is a 730 diesel. Um, it got the X in the domination, so it's a four-wheel drive car. So how does this compare to uh, my old one? Well, for starters, it's got uh, the M chassis, and that makes it very, very uncomfortable. Uh, so uncomfortable, in fact, that I'm reminded of uh, the sports cars that I had in the 90s. And uh, not in a good way. It's rather crashy uh, in comfort and in comfort plus, which, which is the most uh, comfortable uh, setting. It really crashes over potholes and, uh, and stuff on the road. Um, the thing that really stands out is the difference in braking power. I got excellent brakes on my old 7 Series that I drive daily, uh, but the brakes is bigger and they, they take much more progressive and are much easier to dose. Uh, the motor, I got the V8 with the twin turbo, so I got 258 horsepower and 600 newton meters in mine. Uh, this one is a 3 liter diesel. It got <laughs> almost this identical the horsepower, uh, 260 something, and uh, uh, 560 newton meters. Because of the four wheel drive, this car is actually much faster than my uh, mine. Uh, and you can particularly feel the four wheel drive work when you're going out of a wet corner and pushing it. Because with mine, you get oversteer every single time. But with this one, it just grips and goes. And that makes it actually a bit less fun to drive. Much, much like an Audi A8. It grips too well, so you need more horsepower to uh, enjoy the ride, so to speak. Um, the quietness in the cabin, it's the same. It, it hasn't progressed at all in uh, 12 years. So uh, that's not a buying argument. What is a buying argument uh, is perhaps uh, having a new car. How the car functions, and I can see uh, really no reason why you should upgrade if you really have an E65. Um, except maybe that you need to change the pushings because the new car is always much tighter in the chassis. Uh, it got uh, head uh, head uh, heads up the display, and uh, that's really nice. Uh, otherwise, much better input rate on. Uh, everything on the multimedia and everything but it's almost the same gadget um, it got soft close mine got soft close same luggage space of course um, same sound level so that's not an option to if you like me and driven uh, Lexus LS before uh, I had two of those and even though they are almost 10 years down on this one uh, because this is a 2013 model this one is still not quieter than the Lexus. So my short impression after a couple of hours of driving here is that it's uh, if you're driving this like a hooligan and you need to step on the gas all the time because that's what you do, buy the M5. If you want a luxury limousine, don't tick the boxes for the M package. You will ruin the ride. Uh, the bigger the tire, the tire walls are the more comfortable it is, of course. So with low profile tires like in this one, it just crashes all the time. So my top tip, don't buy the M5 and um, buy the four wheel drive if you want to taste drive and get uh, cold climate. Otherwise you will have much more fun in the rear wheel drive one. So that's it. Okay, so... Um Here's the interior shots. Nice interface and heads up display will not display, I suppose, on the phone. No. Reversing camera. And they have uh, reinvented the stick shift, <laughs> the automatic stick shift, because on my model, of course, it sits on the wheel. One thing that I think is rather cool is the LED lights. I really like those. And uh, I must say that the car is actually 
a little bit better looking than uh, than mine. Of course, there comes the the 20 inch tire option again with the M package. Uh, they, they look better, but they crashes a lot. So that's about it for me. So now I will uh, drive this some more and enjoy myself. Over and out.